We've been working on the quadratic formula recently, and as we know, that's we're getting really comfortable with negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. What's happening now is we've got this thing that's part of the quadratic formula called the discriminant, also known as delta. The quadratic formula, the part of the quadratic formula that is b squared minus 4ac. So think about this, we have x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared, oh, where'd that go? b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. My discriminant is this b squared minus 4a. 4ac. What is the purpose of that? It helps us a lot with things. If we look at our quadratics, there's three different ways I'm going to look at it. We've got a quadratic that does this. It has two x-intercepts, or two solutions, when we're solving for x. Then you have another situation where the vertex touches the x-axis, right there. That means I have two equal roots, equal solutions. Some people call them roots, or one real solution would also be another way of stating it. And that, again, means there's one x value that I get when I solve. Then I have another situation, and this is the one where the b squared minus 4ac comes into play. We get a quadratic, does not cross the x-axis. And when it doesn't cross the x-axis, there are no zero solutions. Or no real solutions would be a better way of saying it. Because basically, if you're trying to solve for x, you can't. And how does that play with b squared minus 4ac? Well, it comes into the whole square root thing. Now, I'm going to take some of this here, um, move it up a bit, over, over, and bring that, o bring that over, and this, and move this down here. Now, the reason why I want to do that, I want to make some lines so we know the difference between the three of them. So you're either going to have two solutions, two, one solution, or no real solutions. And it all comes into play with the b squared minus 4ac. Now, if b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, I get two solutions. If b squared minus 4ac equals 0, that means I'm left with, in the quadratic formula, that means x is going to equal negative b over 2a, which means I have one solution. The plus or minus is gone. Then we have another situation. b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. That means I have a negative under the radical. And as we know, no real solution because you can't determine the, the square root of a negative number. So, this, I'll call that 1, 1, 2, 2. Three, three. How do we use it? Well, before you even start trying to factor or do any of that kind of stuff, you can decide whether you have how many solutions you have. In this particular case, I'm going to take, I'm going to write down our determinant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. Comes back to the ax squared plus bx plus c very important. We just have to figure out 
What are our letters? I've got A. B. C. So, take those values. Your determinant is going to be equal to B squared, negative 3 squared, minus 4, times 2, times 4. 9 minus uh, 4 times 4 is 16, times 2 is 32. That equals negative 23. The determinant, negative 23. That means the determinant is less than 0. So, no real solution. It's as easy as this. So what's going to happen is that means I can't factor. I can't use the quadratic formula as we know it right now. And I can't complete the square based on the information we have. Because we're going to get to that point where the square root of negative 23 is not possible. Is it always going to work that way? I assume not. Let's try the second example. We'll do that in this color. So here, we've got a equals 4, b equals negative 4, and c equals negative 1. So the determinant will equal negative 4 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 1 equals 16 plus 16. That means delta is greater than 0. There will be two solutions. So you can go through and factor that and get a nice answer. Hopefully this helps. We'll see how it goes. We'll try some of those next class.